Hello guys, how are you doing today? Cause I'm doing kind of fine. Uh, I'm just gonna let you know, I actually made a commentary responding to Cosmodore's season, Spongebob seasons 1 through 3 ranking video, and I'm gonna be honest, that video is not even half bad, honestly, and I feel like the points I made were actually kind of okay, and it's not like the response to Video Games' Nintendo Set Toybots review. But there are just some things that I like to elaborate more on in the Cosmodore video, and also there were some points that I were or was originally known to put in the video, but Windows Movie Maker was not exactly working with me well that day, so yeah, we're redoing this. Also, this is going to be another actually freestyled video. I know that my previous video was scripted, but this time I'm actually going to freestyle it again. Well, not really freestyle, but think of the points as I go through the video, so yeah, let's jump right in. Think of the new episodes what you made, there is no denying that the original three seasons of Spongebob Squarepants are some of the most entertaining Nickelodeon has ever had. Of cheating your opinion is fact, yay. Well, I'm just... <laughs> Saying that you do know opinions are subjective, right? So there are clearly some people now may may not be as many as the people who do like it, but you have to realize that there are also people who don't like old SpongeBob. Just saying, but yeah, it's not it's not anything too horrible. Therefore, I decided to go for this rather unusual format of just ranking all of them in one go. Okay, here's where the main flaw of this video comes in. You see, he said he's just gonna go through and rank all of them in one go, but the problem with that is it doesn't really... It doesn't really give you enough room to actually go in depth with your reasoning on it, and... Oh, oh boy, this is gonna be a... Uh, gonna be a train wreck so let's go onwards really don't like this episode its plot is weak none of the characters really shine and it honestly sort of weakens the whole double episode as a result well you see when you're gonna say you really don't like an episode and you say that the plot is weak the characters not really shine you kind of have to uh what's it called explain your reasoning not just say it and then not back up anything you're saying. Like, if you're gonna say the characters don't really shine and the plot is weak, you better have some reasoning to back it up, but... Yeah, I can tell you're not really a huge fan of doing that. This really is the dumbest and unfortunately also unfunniest Patrick has ever been. Seriously, poor Spongebob. Now, this is just my personal opinion and my personal defense for the episode, but the reason why Patrick was acting like that to Spongebob, well, you see, sometimes when, let's say, there one of your friends offers to be dumb to impress your parents, and when you, you see it working, you might just want to go along for the ride and play along, and... Also, he, he said that this is the me meanest that Patrick has ever been, but did you remember that the episode Dumped exists? I mean, seriously, he tried to freaking take Gary away from Spongebob. 20 minute Spongebob party with all of the main cast? Sounds a lot cooler in theory than what is shown in the episode. Definitely the worst of all the specials. Okay, since he didn't give any reasoning, I'm going to personally defend the episode on my part. But, yeah, here's my reasons for why Spongebob actually didn't really deserve the stuff he got in the episode. Well, a bunch of people say Spongebob's acting character by being so mean, but, you see, Spongebob's actually a little bit naive as shown in... In, I, in the secret bots where he tells Patrick that he's a little bit naive and when he he also was going along with the plan your own party kit so he just 
It's not they that the other party members were doing the incorrect things. And not to mention, when he got when he was outside of the house, the other party members actually locked him out and were intentionally doing that. And also when Spawn Bubbles on the inside party and he thinks that they're ain't living and that they don't mad and he also thought that the they actually thought SpongeBob's party plan was actually really good. So yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say SpongeBob was acting out of character at all in this episode personally. Having a bus kill character is fine and all, but it doesn't work all that well when he's just straight up mean. I don't know if he was either referring to Spongebob or Squidward, but if he was referring to Squidward, uh... Squidward was actually getting angry at Spongebob pr Spongebob's prank, so he thought that his prank would get back at him. But, you see, when it didn't work, he actually felt guilt from people telling him how mean he is and that Spongebob didn't deserve it. And, here's the catch. He even, Squidward even freaking apologized for being mean to Spongebob, so, yeah, that point doesn't really work all that well when you actually get the proper full context. This is one of the uglier season 1 episodes, which wouldn't be too much of a problem if what is happening was more interesting, but they really don't do a lot with the concept of Spongebob being sick. Funny jokes, just not all that rewatchable. Personally, I'd argue that this is one of my favorite Spongebob season 1 episodes and also favorite one of my favorite episodes of all time and it's okay if you don't like it, but to say that they don't do too much with the concept, I just personally disagree. I mean, there's a bad fourth match with Patrick and Sandy, there's a, also a plot where Patrick is trying to hide Spongebob from Sandy and is also trying to fit Spongebob and... Uh, they, I, in my opinion at least, they actually do some stuff with the concept of Spongebob being sick. See, kids, growing up also comes with the realization that, slowly but surely, you are turning into Bubble Bass. You know, I think the only thing that, that gives me a hint that I'm turning into Bubble Bass is my weight. Because last time I checked, I don't need glasses. Can't the trope of characters being mean to other characters just for the sake of being mean just die, please? Well, time for some defense again. You see, the reason why uh, they're not, I guess you could say being mean, but it's because both of them, they're not being mean just for the sake of being mean. They're just acting like that because they think, because they can do certain things that the other person can't. And not to mention the mention the not to mention the message is that not everyone's perfect at everything. So yeah, and also they kinda do have justification for being mean to each other because they're trying to see who can do the most things and who can do the thing better. So yeah, it's not just for the sake of being mean, Cosmo. Okay, how is this guy not in more episodes? I love him so much. Cause he's a side character. I'm all for patchy and special episodes, but here all of his segments were nothing more than filler. <laughs> oh, they're nothing more than filler? Well, uh, they actually have a plot that goes with the episode, trying to search for the lost episode in question, which is what it is named after the episode. And... Actually, there is a plot to the episode, and also, if that's the case, wouldn't every patchy cinema and every Spongebob episode be nothing more than filler too? I'm never sure what I should take away from this one. Don't have fun with fish hooks? Don't trust Mr. Krabs? Don't leave the burgers to squid? Well, what's the point? Uh, here's the point of the episode. Do not play hooky because you will get in trouble if you do. This guy is such an underappreciated character. But this episode is also the most frustratingly stupid Spongebob has ever been. Oh wow, Spongebob's acting like his naive self? Oh wow, that's such a bad thing because it's not like Spongebob openly admits that he's naive and not to mention he's not the smartest tool in the shed. Okay, that's a, it's not a, 
it's not a very good phrase, but still, SpongeBob's not meant to be the smart genius. Very funny first half. Frustrating second one. Can you please at least give some reasoning why you think the second half is frustrating? And crap, you should give more reasoning to why you like or dislike an episode in general. You look at this hat and tell me with a straight face that Spongebob didn't know about Christmas back in season one. My Spongebob didn't know about Christmas back in season one. Now time for the reasoning why I think that. Because Spongebob episodes pretty much have no continuity in them whatsoever, so you can pretty much just pick up an episode and watch it. So, yeah, he. it's also a possibility that could have, this could have taken place after the Christmas episode, so yeah, there's my reasoning. Now, what I'm wondering is, did Sandy lie and that sauce wasn't actually spicy, or is she just super immune to hotness? Which would explain her lack of attraction towards Spongebob. It also explains Cosmodor in bed, ha <laughs> ha I'll admit, this one's a bit of Spongebob overkill at times, but the ending song is just so damn beautiful. The uh, I think Spongebob being overkill in this episode is kind of the point. And also, again, this is just my personal opinion. I personally didn't find Rip Pants to be all that amazing. Now, don't get me wrong, the song that plays in the episode is pretty good and the message is pretty good, but it's just, in my opinion, not that great. I don't know exactly how to put it in the words, but I just think season one had loads more great episodes than this one. So, how come Spongebob is suddenly this grade A student, even though he didn't once manage to pass his exam before? As an avid observer of the Spongebob Squarepants lore, I am insulted. Uh, well, there's a perfect reason, and you see, Spongebob is great when it comes to all the other aspects of a boat, of the boatmobile stuff, but you see, he's not very good at driving one, so that's why he hasn't, uh, that's why he hasn't got his, that's why he's still... A uh, good noodle. But ugly, we just stink. There's a valuable life lesson in there, S somewhere. Now I am trying my best to explain it, and I did do some, I guess, research in this episode. So if you want to say I'm wrong or explain why, I'm open for that. But. I think the message is don't don't say you're ugly because or don't think that you're ugly simply because your breath stains but I don't know that's as far as I got personally. Okay, what exactly was going on inside Mr. Krabs' hat that made him decide to trust the Monopoly type of map to go on a treasure hunt and um, I, I well, I mean, in the episode, it shows Mr. Krabs literally going insane, so, yeah, I think that's how, that's how it's explained. So, uh, yeah, that was my response. Overall, it wasn't a terrible video, but there were just some things that I didn't like about it, and to be quite frank, in the later half of this video, he does explain himself a little bit more, but... Still not as much as someone like me would like, which I do understand that it, my opinion, again, is subjective. And thankfully, what was nice is that right after he kind of sounded like he was saying that you can't think otherwise, he does later follow up that it is just his opinion. So thankfully, there's at least one scent of redemption, so... Yeah, thanks for coming to me, can't talk, and see you later. Also, uh, th th this is just a personal warning. Please do, do not watch his review of the Ink Lemonade episode. That just embodies how bad Swanbob reviewers can be, but if you want more, some more better content from him, check out the later rankings of Swanbob season rankings, because they're actually better than this one and that one. So, yeah, here's the actual see you later. 
And eh, personally, I wouldn't say Grandma's Kisses is all that great, mainly because uh, the Bikini Bottomites and the people at the Krusty Krab are kind of dits, and Patrick is a pretty big dick in this one too, because he just completely flops on the idea and basically steals SpongeBob's grandmother for him. So, yeah, it doesn't really ripen with age.